Listen up, fiends. We got another one from the dusty crypts of the Midnight Chamber. So crank those stereos to 11, and let's listen to some Nuke in the Living Dead. Nuke in the Living Dead. Dig this. Their second release. A uh, band based out of Detroit, Michigan. Uh, formed in 2002. The first record's called Lost Boys, but this is their just completely epic second album and final album. Uh, only came out on CD uh, on Crypt of All right, Nuke and the Living Dead, dig this. Tony really knocked this artwork out of the park. I mean, it just embodied exactly what that band stood for. Punk as fuck, and it just look at that. Look at that cover art. Undead as hell, punk as fuck, and drunk. Those guys were drinkers. Every Detroit band that I have ever seen, just, man, they drink and they can put on a show. There's a good shot of the band. Tommy Gunn and Ogre and Nuke and all the, the guys. The front folds out. Got all the uh, thank yous and who's in the band there. And then, as I kind of showed a little bit ago, folds out into this really awesome poster this was the kind of stuff in horror punk that I just I love to get just really badass packaging I'm I, I will kill to get this on fucking vinyl nuke if you're listening vinyl limited run just get uh, fucking make me one I don't care I would love to have this and lost boys on wax or fuck, put a 45 out. Do something. Oh my god, dude. So there's that. And we got the actual CD itself. Crypt of Blood 04. The old nuke symbol. He, he's been using that forever. It's on a good chunk of his CDs. Here's the back with the track listing. Tony is just, I, he's, he's easily one of my favorite uh, spook artists, comic artists, whatever you want to call it. He's just awesome. And uh, this is the inside of the, ah, drop of things. So this is the inside of the, uh, the CD booklet. And then, nice little mini poster. Really, really neat album. What to say about Nuke and the Living Dead? I mean, Nuke is like the unsung hero of horror rock, spook rock, boo wop. Uh, that's probably the like what what is considered boo wop, uh, a, a term Mr. Monster coined. They called themselves Boo-Wop way back in the 90s, and so on and so forth. Their website was boo-wop.com. Nuke and the Living Dead arguably did it better. I once remember uh, a story of Jason Trioxin saying that what Boo-Wop should be, Nuke and the Living Dead did it perfectly. They did it better than Mr. Monster did it. And that was coming out of Jason's mouth himself. Um... Just such a killer record. Uh, artwork was done by Big Tony O'Farrell of Rubber Wolf Graphics. Uh, Big Tony was associated with Reanimator Records, which put out a lot of uh, put out some Forbidden Dimension stuff and Mazinga, which Mazinga Big Tony was the bass player for, and just a whole bunch of really creepy, weird horror rock from the '90s. Uh, like a, yet more things we'll get to in the future. Um, I uh, I only got to see me once live, um, 2005 at Elbows in Dayton, Ohio, and. Man, you couldn't have asked for a more legendary horror rock show, especially of that time period. Uh, the opening band was uh, 
Midnight Picture Show, which those guys were kind of jackasses, but then it just went into the Jackalopes, uh, Crypt Keeper 5, Blitz Kid. It, if I remember correctly, it might have been the Epidemic's first or second show, and then Nuke and the Living Dead, I believe, were the headliners. I mean, the, just the whole night was nothing but just knock out band after the other. Uh, Nuke recently posted the flyer, which I will post right here. Um, he posted that on his Facebook, and it really, it really brought back some good memories of that particular night. So, Nuke and the Living Dead. Now, uh, note that it is. It's the fourth Crypt of Blood release. So, this one's kind of kind of dicey to find. There might be some on Discogs, but I know you can get on CDBaby.com uh, and look up Nuke and the Living Dead. Nuke's got, I think, everything that they put out. Uh, he's got his the band that predates this, Nuke and the Toxic Offenders. He might have that up there. He's got Nuke and the Living Dead. And he also has his current band, Nuke and the Hell Riders, up all on CD Baby, so you can get all that stuff. So, if, if you're really into horror rock, dig real deep on this. Um, this one might actually be slightly more obscure for uh, US horror rock than even Shadow Reichenstein, because Shadow Reichenstein. They got over to Europe and the UK and did some shows. Nuke just toured lightly regionally. I don't think they did anything too huge. Um, so they're they're a really neat one to follow uh, if you can find them. Uh, Toxic Offenders, I believe, no, not the Toxic Offenders, Nuke and the Hell Raiders have, I believe, four albums out, and they are, it just, it really follows in the same writing style as this. I mean, some of the, the standout tracks on this album are uh, Drunk on Formaldehyde, uh, of course, The Brew Crew, I mean, they did a music video for that, and I mean, it's just everything you can want in a low budget, you know, indie music video. Get Out, Raise the Dead, Vampire's First Date. I mean, the thing is just knockout song after knockout song. And the Clown Guy Trilogy. Uh, I, I believe they, their last show was in Detroit, possibly. Uh, Detroit in oh, 2007. Um, it's a, re a real shame that they split. But they do occasion uh, the occasional reunion show. It was a five-piece band, and they just killer players all around. So if you can find this uh, this gem, I would definitely I will say that the uh, once Tony did the artwork on this, he kind of became a hot commodity for doing uh, spook band artwork. I mean, he'd been doing it before. He did it for reanimator bands, and. Uh, But once Crypt of Blood started up, he ended up doing a lot of the Crypt of Blood band's uh, covers. Uh, he did a, a cover for a Johnny Cash tribute record by, by mostly horror bands. Uh, so that was that one's not too terribly hard to find. Uh, I haven't seen a full list of Crypt of Blood's catalog. Um, I know Under a Nightmare did a track on there, or did a, uh, an album on it that Tony did the uh, artwork for. But anyway, Nuke and the Living Dead, dig this. I don't want to draw this out any longer. Uh, there's not a whole lot to talk about it. It's a CD. Um, it's kind of hard to get a hold of, but I think you might be able to find a few copies of this. Lost Boys, don't even think about it. That that was distributed 
by the band, it was printed by the band, it's about half impossible to find. This one, you, you might be able to track down a copy or two of it somewhere out on the internet. Um, and you can definitely get it digitally, so I would pick it up if you want some great wop. Uh, something that was even endorsed by Mr. Monster themselves. Pick this up. And, yeah. I mean, the title speaks for itself. It's a panty dropper, and, you know, chicks dig it.